When we studied electromagnetic waves, we learned that when light hits a different material and is transmitted into that material, then the light will bend. Okay? Now the focus is going to be how do we use that bending of light, refraction, how do we use refraction in order to give us the gift of sight? How do we use that ref refraction in order to have corrective lenses that fix the fact that our eyes are slightly, slightly misshapen? Right? How do we uh, use refraction to be able to view the heavens and the stars and planets and moons of other planets? How do we use refraction to view the very, very small? Okay? This is, again, one of the very powerful and beautiful things about science. You could take one little tiny fact, like light bends when it hits a new material. And most people would be like, okay, cool, it does that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? But as scientists, what makes a scientist different is they always ask the question, what can I do with this? How is this helpful? Right? And so when you think that this one little stupid idea that light bends when it hits a surface has been exploited to be able to correct our vision, view the heavens, and see tiny, tiny things that we normally can't see, all right? That is astounding to me. That's amazing and it shows the kind of ingenuity and creativity that if employed with science um, leads to discoveries that make life better and help satisfy our curiosity and help us get a better sense of the world that we live in, um, especially the stuff that we have a hard time seeing, like the very, very small and the very, very big, okay? Um, so if that wasn't inspiring enough, I'm going to go to the quote of the week. The quote of the week is from the poet Maya Angelou, and she says, I've learned that people will forget what you said, people will forget what you did, people will never forget how you made them feel. And this works both ways, right? If you say something that makes somebody not feel good, then, you know, they're going to remember that. And if you, make some, but if you say something that makes somebody feel really good or inspired or proud, then they'll remember that. Um, as a teacher, I'm kind of amazed sometimes at how some of the things that I don't even remember saying end up sticking with somebody for a very, very long time. For example, occasionally I'll run into a student or have a student email me and they'll be like, do you remember that time that you said that? I swear that changed my life. Like I look at something totally differently now because of that one thing you said. And a lot of times I don't even remember, but I'll pretend and be like, I, oh yeah, I remember that. Yeah, glad it, glad it helped you. Um, and it reminds me every day to be very, very careful about what I say because it, it does have an impact, right? And the same will apply to you in your lives. Um, I think I mentioned this story before, but one time... Um, I had a teacher who said, you only have one shot at this. Um, and she meant life. And she meant, you know, if you only have one shot at life, you better do the best damn job that you can at it because you don't, there's no redos, right? And that really stuck with me. And she may not even remember having told me that, you know? So just a little reminder that, you know, our words carry weight and uh, we have the power to, uh, you know, influence people for the better. All right, um, why do we care? This is not the most important application of optics in the world, but I thought it was kind of fun. So there's two farsighted people who are camping in wherever, right? And they need to start a fire. Let's say they're on Survivor, okay? One is nearsighted and the other is farsighted. Whose glasses would be the most useful in starting a fire by concentrating the sun's rays into a small region at the focal point of the lens? All right, by the end of this, um, set of lectures, we will know the answer to that question. All right, we're going to start with the physics of lenses, okay? So what is a lens? A lens is simply a little tool that uses the concept of refraction to bend light in a way that's useful, right? That's all. It's once upon a time, there was a scientist who knew about refraction, and they're like, how do we make this useful? And they, they made a lens. And they realized that there's two kinds of lenses. One lens is called a converging lens, right? And if they shape it just right, right, then it turns out that parallel light that reaches this lens 
will all move through one common spot called the focal length. Okay, so this is a converging lens. Okay, in other words, it makes light beams converge. Okay, and they also realize that there's a different lens, right? It's called a diverging lens. It's shaped like this. Um, so this is convex and this is concave, right? And a diverging lens does what you would expect also. It takes parallel rays and it makes them diverge. Right? But the thing about diverging lenses is if you trace back, if you trace back all the diverge, oh, that's funny. If you trace them all back, and um, this is poorly drawn, but they will all trace back to the focal length of the diverging lens. Okay? All right. That's broken and I should never use that again. All right, so this is, well, we're starting there. This is the two types of lenses. We have converging, where all the parallel rays will converge upon a focal length, right? And then we have a diverging lens, where all the rays will diverge, but if you trace them back, they'll all trace back to a common focal length on the other side of the lens, okay? And so when we are talking about, um, about a lens, we want to find out, the whole goal is, where is the image going to be formed, okay? Where is the image going to be formed? And there's a few key rays that allow us to determine where the image is going to be formed due to a given lens, okay? And I'm about to show you what those special rays are right now. So um, again, let's imagine that we have a little, little center reference here. and Imagine here I have a lens, okay? And imagine I have an object. Now, it just so happens that objects in optics are the little arrows, right? This could be anything, but they just make them little arrows because whatever. Um, what else are you going to make it be? So almost actually looks like a little mushroom. So let's say then that I know that there is a focal length here and over here on the lens, right? And in order to find out where this image is gonna form, okay, we just use these three special rays, okay? Special ray number one is, it does this. Special ray number one is a parallel ray that leaves the object, and we all know that parallel rays go through the focal length, right? So this, Parallel, going through the focal length. That's special ray number one, okay? Special ray number two goes through the focal length on the side of the object. So, so just to be clear, there's light rays moving away from this object, from every point of this object in every direction, right? Light is ricocheting and, and, and bouncing off of objects in every single direction, right? But we're looking at just three of those specific directions. So just to be clear, light goes this way, 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 right? It goes all the ways. But we're picking just three specific ones of these beams because they help us very easily find out where the image forms. Okay? So first one, again, is parallel, goes through the focal length. Second one goes through the focal length and will end up cutting over parallel, right? If you just like reverse this, imagine you reverse this light beam, it would go through the focal length on this side, right? And then the third special ray, so this is special ray one, special ray two, the third special ray goes right through the center and it just so happens that if you go through the center of a lens, there's no deflection at all. So it'll be like this. Okay, and you'll notice that they all overlap here at one common spot, and that spot is where the image will be formed. Okay? So just remember your three special rays, one that goes through the center, one that goes parallel and cuts through the focal length, and one that goes through the focal length on the object side and then goes over parallel. Okay? Now, 
you'll see in this next image here that these all converge to form an image and it shows how, you know, how we actually see this. So if we're looking at this object through this glass and our eyeball is right here, right, then we see this image here as if, th as if the light came from that image and into our eyeballs like that, right? So lenses help create this illusion that we are seeing light coming from a different spot, okay? That's the whole point of it. That's what lenses do. And in the next video, we're going to begin talking about what are the different types of images that lenses can create, all right? And I'll see you there.